First of all, I apologize for my accent because I'm French. And usually, we don't speak foreign languages. And I come from the southwest of France, a native region for rugby players who so prefer <laughs> to play rugby than to learn foreign languages. So I apologize. Um, however, it's a, a real pleasure to be there this morning and to address the New Zealand Association for the Study of Cooperative and Mutual Conference 2012 in Wellington. And uh, let me thank uh, you warmly for the opportunity to testify on cooperative banking in the context of the global financial crisis. So I know how, it is, how important is this conference can be for, uh, for you, and I will try as much as possible to meet your expectations. As we all know, fallout from the crisis is not limited to those who engage in the activities that were at the center of the problem. Indeed, as the crisis developed, conditions deteriorated so severely that many banks that had been considered financially strong, that had never made a single subprime loan, found themselves struggling for survival. The first part of my presentation, in 10 minutes, I will, mean, I will remind you what are the key components of the cooperative banking business model as a stakeholder bank and not shareholder bank. Then I will witness secondhand the cooperative banks and the crisis in Europe with a comprehensive explanation of their resilience. Before closing the presentation, I will share my thoughts with you on the role of the cooperative banks on the expecting economy recovery in Europe. My name, as it was said, is Hervé Guider, and I am the general manager of the European Association of Cooperative Banks. This is you know, short description of this association, which is a lobbying association. Prior to that, I, have, I was a senior staffer at the National Association of Credit Agricole in Paris. And prior to working in this association, I was a CFO of a regional cooperative bank in France. The ACB primary mission is to represent, to defend, and to promote the cooperative business models toward the regulators and policy makers. It performs this important public function by participating in all kinds of discussions with the public authorities and by drafting position paper in order to lobby cooperative banks, to lobby them, sorry, for the benefits of the 4,000 cooperative banks in Europe representing 60 million members and 180 million customers in the European Union. What makes the difference as cooperative banks? Cooperative banks are non-listed banks, and by this way, maximizing the rate of return on capital is not exclusive or even dominant business objective. Cooperative banks was said are long-term oriented and usually customers are members or owners of the banks. As cooperative, we apply the principle one person, one vote, and not one share, one vote. There is a strong link between ownership management, ownership and management, and members can influence the bank decisions making bodies. Most cooperative banks are organized in rent networks with a degree and method of integration, regional, national, varying by country. At some cooperative banks, the central institutions also acts as a sort of internal central bank by allocating liquidity among the affiliated institutions and raising funding on the financial markets. A few words about the situation in Europe. For now three years, developments in Europe have played a critical role in shaping the tenure of global financial markets. The combination of high debts, large deficits, and poor growth prospect in several European countries using the euro has raised concerns about their fiscal sustainability. Such concerns were initially focused on Greece, but have since spread to a number of other euro area countries, leading to substantial increases in their sovereign cost. Pessimists about this country's fiscal situation in turn has helped 
to undermine confidence in the strengths of European financial institutions, increasing the institutions' borrowing cost and strengthening to curtail their supply of credit. These developments have strained global financial markets and weighed on global economy acti activity. The euro area is currently confronting difficult challenges of fiscal sustainability, of liquidity, and of structural imbalances. If the euro area were to experience a deterioration of financial condition, this could pose important risk for our recovery. We are making progress, and the first priority is a structural reform to restore competitiveness and growth, fiscal reform to restore sustainability of public finances and repair, and reform of the banking system. These efforts by individual countries are being reinforced across the euro area by broader economic governance reform. The European monetary and banking <coughs> authorities have taken steps to provide strong assurance that European banks we have access to liquidity and big strong capital buffer. In recent months, the European Central Bank has taken critical actions, including lowering interest rates, providing liquidity to banks, and buying sovereign debt, sovereign bonds in the secondary market. Meanwhile, the European Banking Authorities has undertaken an effort designed to significantly strengthen bank capital buffers. At the end of this month, European leaders will discuss the next step, which is the banking union, following the bailout plan for the rescue of the Spanish banks via the European stabilization mechanisms. The euro area crisis, the fragile growth, the high level of unemployment, and at the top, the wave of new legislations characterize the landscape of cooperative banks in Europe, which will run their business in a very competitive environment, boosted by the emergence of the new technology in the retail banking sectors. In 2007, the cooperative business banking model was seen as an old-fashioned model, inefficient, and likely unable to finance a modern economy. Five years later, in 2012, the value and the role of cooperative banks was unanimously underlined and their capacity to absorb the adverse effect of the crisis has confirmed the IMF survey, which argued that cooperative banks are more stable than commercial banks. Most cooperative banks in Europe, with a predominant focus on domestic retail banking, have been able to weather the financial storm relatively well, remaining well capitalized and continuing to lend while all the lenders pull back access to credit. Cooperative banking model is very different from that of the largest banks. Cooperative banks are local by their nature. They have deep roots in their communities. Their value proposition is that they are able and willing to take the time and the effort to know and work with a customer in a way that may, need, that may not be possible for a large <coughs> more distance institution. This trend is particularly important when it comes to small business lending, where a local cooperative bank may understand things about a prospective customer that cannot be captured in a more quantitative credit scoring model that might be used by larger institutions. The largest banks rely heavily on statistical models to assess borrowers' capital collateral and capacity to repay. And those approaches can add value. But banks whose headquarters and key decision makers are hundreds or thousands of kilometers away inevitably lack in depth local knowledge that cooperative banks use to assess characters and conditions when making credit conditions and decisions. This advantage in terms of asymmetric information for cooperative banks is fundamental to their effectiveness and cannot be matched by models or algorithms. A computer program cannot judge the credit worthiness of a fledging local business or to build long-standing relationship with customers and borrowers. In addition, cooperative banks have set up a specific institutional protection schemes and specific cross-guarantee systems 
along specific liquidity mechanisms which contribute to their solidity and enhance the protections of their members and depositors. This mechanics, mechanism operates as follows. If a bank runs into financial difficulties, these problems are absorbed with the aid of other banks. I would add that the quality of the cooperative shares in terms of loss absorption should shall encourage the regulators to consider them as quality one capital in full compliance with Basel recommendations. Given the important role that cooperative banks play in their local areas, the regulators and other policy makers should pay more attention to our specificities as cooperative banks. The principles, the basic principles, one size fits all, is really inappropriate for cooperative banks. Despite some of the worst economic conditions since the Greek depressions, cooperative banks have already been doing part to meet the credit needs of their customers, notably small business customers and households. As we have learned to work, a financial system dominated by a handful of large institutions is, an, is unlikely to be resilient in the face of a crisis. My view is that a diffuse financial system, one with a diverse range of institutions of varying size, ownership and complexity, is preferable to a system that is highly concentrated and based on a single business model. In fact, the need for diversification is one of the great lessons of the crisis. Cooperative banks remain a critical component of the financial system and of the economy. They help keep their local economies vibrant and growing by taking and managing the risk of local lending, which large, larger banks may be unwilling or unable to do. We often respond with greater agility to lending requests than our national competitors because of our detailed knowledge of the need of our customers and our close ties of the local economies we serve. Cooperative banks assure the maintenance of the flow of credit to business and individual and to provide a stable, efficient payment system and safe depositor. The larger commercial banks are characterized not only by their size, but also by the scope of operation and complexity. These banks are often tightly interconnected, raising the prospect that the failure of one institution could rapidly destabilize the wider financial systems, giving rise to the too big to fail problems. One minute. The characteristic of the larger commercial banks stand in contrast with those of cooperative banks. To be clear, cooperative banks are not immune from taking an excessive risk. But these are reasons why risk of cooperative banks are likely to be less dangerous to the financial systems. First, cooperative banks generally are less complex and more easily understood. Second, cooperative banks tend to be more traditional and conservative approach because it's less easy for them to supplement it. What is often referred to as financial engineering is less likely to become the norm in cooperative banks because such engineering, by definition, may pose hidden risk that could reflect poorly on cooperative bankers and negatively affect their image at the local level. To conclude, the relation among stability, growth, and regulation is crucial for assessing reform proposals and priorities. While cooperative banks were also hit by the creative crisis and the subsequent economic recession, at least in Europe, they performed relatively steadily compared to non-cooperative banks. The characteristic and specificities should be more and more recognized by the regulators, not only in Europe, but also by the Basel Committee, the Financial Stability, and the G20. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you.